back to my channel and to my very first plan with me. Today, the kit I am using is one to memory plan our trip to Walt Disney World. And so this kit is from Little Spark Design. I found her on Etsy. And this kit is actually just a three page kit. So there's no foiling on it. Um, the sticker material is matte, but I love this full boxes page. And this was the main reason why I decided to use this kit or to purchase this kit in order to memory plan for our week at Walt Disney World because they do have the icons from every park as well as this cute little Main Street full boxes. So that is super fun. You have your habit trackers and some headers and half boxes. And then here we have the date covers, more functional boxes, functional checklists, some flags, a few icons. And then on the last page, we do have some more icons, some scripts, and then some other, I don't know if this is like mini headers or whatever, but um, I don't think I'm gonna be using too much of it since this is a memory plan and not, we didn't really, all the plans for the week were not so much um, plans than they were play. So it'll just be a fun little creative thing to do in my planner. And then I did buy this additional deco sheet of icons. It does have the old um, MGM Studios logo. That's no longer the logo for Hollywood Studios. I still liked it for the balloons and the castle and the tree and Spaceship Earth. We did do some park hopping while we're there. So I did want to have more than one sticker for each of the parks. And then on top of that, I also got these full box quote stickers. I don't know if I'm gonna use them, but I thought that maybe that pinkish purple could pop on some of these days. So we'll see how that works out. Again, I am super new at planning, but let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, so this is where we switch to voiceover in hopes that I'm less awkward. The first thing I wanted to do in today's video was also call out the other shops that I'm using to complement this kit. And so the first thing that I have out is this 4x6 sticker book from Sadie Stickers. And I've used this for my leftover wanton in a million as well as freebies and samplers from Black Friday. And so I have that out to utilize some icons and deco. And then I'm also decided to use silver foiling. And so I'm trying to find a washi tape and I do end up using Simply Gilded. I don't use this washi tape that I unwrapped, but 80% um, of my washi stash is Simply Gilded. And then for the silver foil date dots, I use Saucy Sticker Co. And those are clear circle date dots. And then I think those are all the shops. Oh, for the silver foil overlays that I use later in the video, that's from Rose Colored Days. And I think that's all the other shops I'm using. And then as far as my actual planner quote unquote setup, I'm using Wonton in a Million's weekly vertical undated planner in A5 wide. And I love the fact that it's undated because it kind of relieves the pressure to keep up with every week or feeling like I'm wasting paper if I miss that week or it's not as eventful and I don't want a memory plan in it. So this book has been very good for a beginner like me. Okay, now that we've talked shops, I do wanna take this opportunity to just talk overall about my experience of going to Walt Disney World in the middle of a pandemic. I did also visit Disney World in 2019 pre-pandemic, so I feel like I have a pretty good um, recent experience to compare it to. I mean, I know there's a lot of locals who have done this and have gone to Disney World many more times than I have, but I think as someone who has to travel to the area, I feel like I have a very valuable perspective to bring. And I know there's a lot of people out there who, especially with Disneyland being closed, are thinking about going. And so I thought it would be good to kind of share my thoughts. So just generally, 
in this pandemic I have been very cautious like so much cautious that I've only seen my mom a couple of times and I haven't seen my family who I see almost like every month in like a year so I've been very cautious um, and deciding to go to Orlando was like a very bittersweet decision for me because I did want so desperately to get my Disney Parks dose but then I also wanted to make the best decision for me and Jacob but thankfully um, we just decided to go at the time we did and I feel like it was the best time so overall I don't regret going to Disney World overall I had a really good experience it was a lot less stressful than I thought it would be and so that's just the what is what do you call it it's like the TLDR that's the spoiler alert is that I actually enjoyed going and I feel like a lot of people who do decide to go during the pandemic you're just happy for any taste of Disney right so there's that <laughs> and then there's also the fact that we ended up being in Walt Disney World from Tuesday to Friday so we were there all weekdays Friday I guess you consider a weekend um, and it was also the first day of the festival so then there's that but I think overall um, I just wanted to go per category and just my comfort level with each so like for example park capacity um, I was really worried that it would feel too full for me having been in quarantine and sheltered in place for most of the last year but honestly the park capacity was appropriate well I don't know what would be appropriate in the middle of a pandemic but it wasn't as packed as I had seen it in videos the weeks prior because it was like New Year's and people were on break and so the parks looked so much more full and I was worried that it would look that full when I was there but I think a lot of that was because we went on weekdays so park capacity was pretty it wasn't super uncomfortable but it wasn't super comfortable I think it was just right like there was enough people there to feel like you're at a Disney park but empty enough to still be able to social distance so that's my two cents um, I do really enjoy the park reservation system I love that you know you kind of secure your spot at a park so you know you're definitely getting into one um, I'm also like a hardcore planner so I feel like even post pandemic I would love to see this system implemented or the system stay at Walt Disney World and then implemented at Disneyland whenever they open so I 10 out of 10 for the reservation system well I mean the app could always use some work but that's another conversation for another day um, and then wait times were actually pretty good and I want to say all the wait times were lower than what was posted to us, whether on the app or at the physical queue where the cast member holds a sign. I feel like we definitely got on rides sooner than we expected. So that was a pleasant surprise. I definitely would recommend getting to the parks earlier because then you're able to knock off a lot of rides at the beginning and you do wait like it's not like everything's a walk-on at park open but I think for me and Jacob we just liked the idea of being able to take our afternoon at a slower pace or even just decide to do different things or just go with the flow right so that's my personal opinion uh, we drove to the park so if you are not staying on property I would recommend just paying for regular parking if you're only planning to be at that park for that day however if you do plan to park hop I will say that the preferred parking is worth it because it works at all parks for that day so if you go to Magic Kingdom in the morning and pay for preferred parking and then you drive to Epcot to park hop as long as there are parking spaces in the preferred parking area you can use it there so I feel like if you're a bigger family if you don't want to waste your time walking through the parking lot then definitely go for preferred parking we ended up doing that 
um, on our last day at Epcot. So that was nice. And then speaking of park hopping, I loved the Skyliner. I'm so glad we got to try it out and that we didn't get stuck on it. I know that that is like super old news, but that's the only memory I have of the Skyliner. But um, it's really cool to pass through all the other resorts between Hollywood Studios and Epcot. So that was a fun ride. And so that I would definitely recommend at least riding the Skyliner once if you're planning to visit, even if you're not planning to like go to the parks or even go to any of the resorts, just get on it, just to get on it and like take in the view. It was a great experience. So that's that for park hopping. And there's this phone number you can call too to, um, it's just like a pre-recorded person on the other end to just tell you like all parks are open for park hopping. Um, I got that phone number from Disney Food Blog, so if I find it before I post this, I'll stick it into this video. And it was super helpful because then it like gave me the reassurance that like, okay, we're not going to get all the way to that park and then feel like I wasted my time because they won't let us in. And for the most part, all parks were open for park hopping, so that was great. And then restaurants, so I think I had shared in our travel vlog that Jacob and I typically don't do restaurants or sit down restaurants when we're at the Disney parks, but that was actually something we decided to do while we were at Walt Disney World. So we got to eat at the Brown Derby in Hollywood Studios, we did the Coral Reef restaurant in Epcot, and then we tried to do Royal Table, but we we just forgot to be at the restaurant right at 11 to check in on walk-ups. Um, here's the funny part. For us, a party of two, the app always told us that the wait list or like the virtual walk-up list was full. But with Brown Derby and Coral Reef, when we walk straight up to like the restaurant person, they basically were able to seat us within like five to 10 minutes. So your smaller party would highly recommend just going up and asking right when the restaurant opens or even like 30 to an hour before you know you're gonna get hungry so that was more pleasant experiences at Walt Disney World and then I think the last thing I would want to talk about is our experience um, with like other people at the parks um, I would get really frustrated sometimes at some of the other park attendees. I, I feel like it wasn't often, but at least once a day there was like some family or some couple who like really tried to like take their mask off when you know you shouldn't. And so I think like, especially now that we're going into a season where the vaccine is starting to be more widely available and will likely be widely available by the end of the year or the middle of the year, it's like you should still follow the rules, right? Like Disney is working very hard to keep the parks a safe place. And for the most part, like all the cast members made me feel safe. Like watching them sanitize and clean and keep social distance, like it was amazing. And I think the only moments where I felt uncomfortable or I felt super cautious and anxious was because of other people at the park. So just take note, if you want your Disney magic, be considerate of others, please, because we all just want to get our magic in while also trying to, you know, be safe and kind towards others. So, yeah. And then I was really sad that we had to change our flight to a super early flight because I wanted to check out the Disney store at the the Orlando airport but we were at the airport at like 7 a.m. so we couldn't because it was closed so I have no opinion on that but who cares because there's a million other vloggers who have been there so let's just all go watch their videos um, and then I think the last thing oh Disney Springs so we basically went back to Disney Springs like every evening I think our Animal Kingdom day we left Animal Kingdom for lunch and just ate lunch at Disney Springs and um, 
that wasn't a bad experience at all and I think part of it again was because we were there during the weekdays definitely felt more cramped and full at Disney Springs because it is not a park and so more people were there and um, yeah but we didn't worry too much we did really good with sanitizing keeping our hands clean not like touching stuff if we didn't have intention to possibly buy it especially in world of disney right because you're like touching everything you're like oh what's this oh what's this but uh we just tried to only touch the things that we were gonna buy and wow i am done with the spread already so i did my little wiggle i'm showing all my leftovers i actually didn't use much of the de extra deco sheet that i got so oh well but i really did enjoy putting this spread together um, and then I just go ahead and put the leftover stickers in my CD sticker book and I do have more sticker books on the way So I'm gonna be a little more organized with stickers in a couple weeks. Let me know if you want that to be in a video um, But yeah, thanks for joining this plan with me. I hope you enjoyed it. Please remember to give it a like comment down below anything I just want to hear from you what you think about this content and I hope to see you at my next video. Until then, have a fantastic day.